Hi, I'm Kevin Hill. And as you can see, I'm here at Yosemite National Park. Now it's January, so it's a little cold, but today I thought we would pick a fun little scene from this area to paint. Now that we're here in the studio, I'll pick up just a little bit of blue, black, and red on a two inch brush. And let's just start up here and make a beautiful blue sky. This painting is just gonna, it's gonna be subtle. Maybe, maybe we'll add some clouds to the scene. I think that'd be pretty. But for now we just want a blue background. But boy, what inspiration. Those mountains are just amazing. All the scenery there, so pretty. And I love, I love how on the ground there was not a lot of snow, but there was a little bit here and there with the frozen lakes and the frozen streams. Oh, it was pretty. Now with our filbert brush and some white and the tiniest speck of red, let's go ahead and put some soft and beautiful clouds up here in the sky. Now, I really don't want much because there, there really wasn't any clouds in the original scene that I was looking at. But that's okay. We can add them in if we want them. And I do think they would add just a little bit to this painting. Now I have several photos that I'm working from, all of the same mountain range and valley area. And I have just two or three different angles and I'm sort of gonna work them together into one painting. It's hard to capture the overall scene in just one photo. So this way I get all the, the mountain ridges that I like and, and all the different textures in the valley and the different movements of the stream, all in one painting. I think that's very nice. Now here I have three different colors. This is a nice soft purple color and then a gray with some brown and a gray with some blue. So we'll start with the purple. And as you can see, I have a little quick basic sketch of the mountain that we just looked at. See, this is a very distinct peak here, so I wanted to make sure I got that one in right. So we'll take a little bit of this purple to start out with and just begin brushing it in. See that? The light's gonna come across like this. Oh, it was beautiful lighting. And I'm just changing up the colors as I go. I don't wanna go so dark here that we lose the perspective and the depth in the painting. This mountain was slightly light because of how far away it was. So make sure you get that. All right. Just sort of work on the shadow areas first then use one of the other grays, maybe the lighter gray with some brown. We'll underpaint the face of the mountain with that one. But remember, we're gonna come back and highlight so most of this will get covered up. Now I'm beginning to refine some of these little shapes up here. We blocked in most of the big masses of color. But at this point, I'm just adding these little little areas of sunlight. And this is just the underpainting. Look how detailed it, it looks. Normally, we don't go so detailed with our underpainting, but I really do think that this is gonna pay off here in the long run because we're gonna have a lot of the mountains sort of mapped out for us and all we have to do is put the highlights in the, in the right spots. And all this subtle brushwork will kinda, it'll show through eventually at the end. All right, I like it. And then back here, we need to, to do a little something on this background mountain, a little bit of shadow. There. Now with a little bit of yellow and white on the knife, pull it out flat and then scoop off a little bit of paint. Let's just, <laughs> let's do the fun part. This is my favorite. We're just gonna begin to highlight this beautiful mountain up here. Wow, these mountains were truly amazing. I mean, the cracks and the bumps and all the texture, they look like they were painted with the knife. They really do. So that's, that's a tool of choice today. We're gonna paint them with the knife. Now, if they were further away, you could detail them out with a brush, but oh, I love the texture that this gives. Look at this beautiful sunlight out here. Just catching the sun. So nice. 
Maybe we need some up in here. And just work. You can press fairly hard as you work here because there's, there's very little paint down. So you have a little more freedom. Of course, you can, you can play with it too much and it will mix. It'll mix with the underpainting too much, but if that happens, it's an easy fix. Watch this. Oops, not a fan of that spot. Doesn't look too good. Wipe the knife, take off as much of that paint as you can, set that brush down, go back to some of the other colors and you can fix it. See, pick up the knife and go right back over it. Not a big deal. With a nice dark green color on a filbert brush, let's just add in some tiny little trees up here on the mountain. Nothing too large, just the indication of a few. There. All right. It was so, so amazing to see all these trees growing so tall. Really, really pretty inspiring. <laughs> all right. They don't all have to be perfect or, or match. In fact, you don't want them to match. But you don't want any that are way taller than the others. So keep that in mind as you, as you make your trees. And they weren't just up at the top. Oh, there was tons of them growing down on the mountain like this too. Now with our filbert brush and some blue and white. Let's just begin to, to drop in some beautiful snow patches here. Now there was not a lot of snow on these mountains or on the ground, but there was some. And I think partly the reason these mountains are not overly covered was because of how steep the angles are. Also, there just wasn't much snow there. All right, so we'll just sort of sprinkle this on here and there. I'm gonna avoid the big steep areas. I'm gonna keep it more like it's stuck in the little cracks and the flat areas, because that's the way it looked. Now, as you can see, I have another sketch on the canvas. This is maybe just a, a little river, something like that. This is some land right here. So let's go ahead and just begin to, to underpaint some of this. I really don't want a dark underpainting because a lot of this is brown, dry grass. But there is some green in here as well. And certainly we'll have some big evergreens and we may end up losing portions of the mountain, but that's okay. I think we'll have a couple of nice, nice large ones over there. All right, let's see, sort of cut in around the river. We'll leave the river area open for now. All right vary your colors. You could use a bigger brush, but then you get more, you get more solid colors. I want a little more color variation. When you're doing dry grass, if it's just brown, it's kind of not so exciting. So work in a lot of colors in the underpainting and they will show through. You'll be happy. Now I'll pull the filbert brush to a very sharp edge and mix together just a little bit of black, blue, and green. Let's go ahead and begin to work on some trees here. So let's start by putting one little line right there, working back and forth. Now these trees are slightly different than some of the ones we do. They kind of have branches that go down and up. Now sometimes I do those, but not always. I just thought it's worth mentioning. They do have little branches that sweep up. You can go as detailed as you want, but, oh, we're gonna be doing so many and don't wanna spend all day on the evergreens. Now, maybe that's not near tall enough. I think we gotta go about that tall. The reason is these trees are actually pretty close. So in this painting, and this really is the way it was, in this painting, you see the foreground, then you see these large trees, and then you pretty much just see the mountain behind the trees. So you're missing a little bit of land area in between. So you gotta paint it with that perspective in mind. Use the appropriate colors. Make sure you get these nice and dark. And you can have a lot of the trees, just put in a lot of, at once. A lot of the trees can have their trunks come down to about there and leaving some of this 
land area showing through. Now we can go ahead and drop in some beautiful trees, <laughs> some beautiful large trees up here. You want to keep the shapes matching the other ones. You want them to be hooked upward. Beautiful shapes. All right. Let's see, I'm just dabbing and dotting with the filbert brush. Taking my time and allowing all these beautiful details to happen. Make sure you leave these nice pockets of sky and air showing through. Don't want to fill it up solid because that wouldn't look nearly as nice. All right. Now these trees were so big, they were, they were amazingly large. They just tower over everything. And I think this painting really captures that. Now with our filbert brush, we'll simply repeat the process and continue to make these beautiful little pine needles and leaves out here. All right. Now I'm gonna do this tree just slightly different. Maybe it's a little closer. You might wanna widen the trunk just a tiny bit. All right. This tree's a little closer, so I'm gonna go a little bit larger here with my brush strokes, as well as not connect them to the tree so much. Oh, there'll be some connected to the tree, but it won't, it won't be as tightly packed as these trees. It'll be more loose and open. All right, and then we can connect them with branches very easily later. Now we can begin to work on our little stream or river back here. Just have a little bit of blue, touch of red into that blue. And we're just scrubbing back and forth in this white area that we left. We left it open. All right, now obviously this isn't the final color. We'll be highlighting and doing all sorts of beautiful things. For now, just sort of throw some color down like that. And we're gonna need some green and brown. This will act as reflections in the water. So most of it is actually not even blue. Next, let's shape some of this land area with highlights. I've got just a little bit of brown, yellow, and, and white on the filbert, and we'll just, just begin to work on some of these areas. Don't want to go crazy. Maybe you want to add a little more brown. There's some brown. Let's add some red. Cut in a nice little highlight there and blend it back leaving all these pockets of dark. That's what's gonna make your painting pop out. All those pockets of dark. Now, of course, you probably know this, but I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll remind you anyways. You want your, you want your detail back here to be very soft, soft edges. And then as you work forward here, you leave more texture and that's what it helps to, to bring you forward. Allow some of the some of the grain of the canvas to actually do the work for you. See that? Leave larger pockets of dark and, oh, that's nice. Now with our one inch brush, we can put in some beautiful blades of grass here. See, just push up or down. Maybe we'll, we'll sort of pull down here for these beautiful tops. But the rest of the areas, we don't really care where you can't see it. Oh, that's nice, I love this effect. Just the top of the one inch. Very nice. Maybe we want to tap in a little bit over here. Now you don't have to use the one inch brush. You could use the two inch brush or maybe even the filbert or fan. Whatever you feel comfortable using. And then you can add some highlight. How much? Just enough. Mostly golden, beautiful colors. Next, we'll add one last large tree to this painting. See, I'm just gonna dab and dot. But I think that this one is not even in the painting, at least the trunk part of it. All we can see are a few of the branches sort of hanging in. And oh, that's interesting. You see, that's a lot better than just doing another tree right here because that would be, <laughs> those sides would be too similar. 
So this really helps to change it up. Now we can drop on some beautiful highlights up here on these trees. I'm just dabbing with the filbert using a nice mix of yellow and green, maybe a touch of blue in there once in a while to kind of just change the color. Now I want to leave a lot of dark in these trees. And I also don't want to slide the brush too much. If you do too much sliding, it ends up looking too smooth. So be careful, kind of just watch out, go slow and, and enjoy highlighting them because it's a lot of fun. The lights, of course, coming across and hitting the, the right side of the trees. That's where you focus more of your sunlight. Now we can add on a few final details here. I have a little bit of blue and white on the filbert brush. Oh, we're just sort of sprinkling in a, a tiniest little bit of snow. Really not much more in the shadows than anything else. See that? Don't overdo, just a little. Doesn't take much. There was just the tiniest bit of snow on the ground. And I'm kind of just, just picking out the places in my painting where I think it would, it would fit and I drop it in. But again, it's, it's so important that there's very little. Now with our liner brush, we'll add in the last of the details. Just a few sticks and, and larger blades of grass. This is such a, a great brush, it seems to go forever. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.